last episode. the word of God through Jesus Christ street and outreach ministry raw and uncut productions Perfect time for the word. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850-24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others, just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have you are in my life, for all that you've done for thy servant, Lord, you're just so wonderful, you're just so wonderful, I can't think of how was my life to be without you, as long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind, this is my prayer, sometimes I don't have And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Irish Telecast. Today, we have a very powerful show to share with you. And this is breaking news, so you don't want to miss it. You want to listen, you want to pay attention, grab a pen, a Bible or two, some paper, take notes. The ministry number is on the screen at the bottom down there. And the website is 
where? Up here, so that that way you can see the website and know how to reach the ministry. And today we have a special guest. Remember, first of all, I'd like to give honor to God, who's the Lord of my life, so that way we'd be under the anointing to be lined up in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just come before your throne of grace one more time, before your throne of mercy one more time, Father God. Lord, asking you, Father, for forgiveness, Father, for all of our sins, Father God. We thank you for the forgiveness on tonight, Father God. Lord, we just dedicate this broadcast back unto you, Father God, for it is used for your glory, Father God. Lord, we ask you to touch every viewer, Father God, every listener, Father God, every caller, Father God. Lord, we ask you to anoint them as well, Father God. Anoint us from the crown of our head into the soles of our feet, Father God. Lord, let there be fresh fire that fall in this studio, Father God, on tonight, Father God. Use both apostles, Father God, and make myself available, Father God, for your use, for your glory, Father God. And most of all, Father God, we thank you tonight for the precious blood of Jesus Christ that does cleanse us from day to day. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. and amen. Amen. So now those of you that are watching by Facebook, those of you that are watching by YouTube, those of you that are watching in other countries, you're going to enjoy this and get fed by it. So walk with us as we walk through the Holy Bible. We're recording it in Connecticut, but by after it's edited and everything, it's going to be spread all over the place because this is so needed. I'm just going to start with one scripture. And after reading that, usually you know the Lord used us to read several scriptures, but I'm just led to read one scripture, which might be two verses. And this is going to be powerful because it's going to set the stage for what God is going to say and do. And I have to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost because when he say tag, I got a tag. And, and, and we're just going to allow God to use us. So if we seem like we're not here, it's only because we have to remain under the anointing. God bless you and thank you for joining with us. Turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4. And we're going to start, actually, I hear you, Lord. Hmm. We're going to start back <laughs> at verse 7. And we're going to walk up to the verse that we're actually going to be at. First Peter chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 7. And I ask that you pay deep attention. And I'm telling you, this is going to be awesome. Uh, the ministry's number, if you want to call for prayer, is 475-300-3850. And it's a 24-hour number. Here we go. I'm coming out of the King James Version, and it reads on this wise. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. But if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, 
he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. <laughs> but let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Now here's the verse where God actually have us dealing with. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. Mm -hmm. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins. Again, we ask you and we say grace over this food. Yes. Let it be nourishment unto our souls yes. as natural food is unto our bodies. Minister to us. Fill us with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Give us a spiritual understanding of your word. And we ask that you, O oh God, and you alone orchestrate this show. Use every gift that you have imparted that come from you. And feed your people. We step back. And we ask that you allow us to decrease that you may increase. Let not a prideful spirit be present in this studio. But instead, power under the Holy Ghost, using us for your glory. And you do the teaching and the preaching. Let the tongues fly. Let the prophecies go. <laughs> and Lord, move in a mighty way. Throw your weight around. Satan, we rebuke you. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we pray. In Jesus' name. Two words that God has placed on the table from verse 17 of 1 Peter 4. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Judgment must begin at the house of God. There's many who associate this scripture with the place of worship that they go to. Mm, come on. But I thank God. Glory. Okay, wait a minute. God said go this way. And the word judgment is usually ran right over. Mm. It's like if you're driving down the street and you see a dead animal in the street, you just run right over them. If it's a live animal, you just run right over them, man, like you didn't do anything. So a lot of times there's ministers reading passages of scripture and they're doing good doing that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they just run over a word. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Usually that's what preachers do. Well. But a teacher, when reading, come to a certain word and we are like stubbed, like, whoa, wait a minute. What is that word doing there? And that word requires explanation because the meat of the passage is in that word. All right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And if you don't understand what that word means, then you miss the whole text and the whole purpose of the text. Mm -hmm. The thought that God gave me for this lesson. He said, the rules have not changed. All right. well. And the title was, read the book. He didn't say read the iPad. <laughs> he didn't say stand in the pulpit with your tablet or, 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 or with, with your computer. He didn't yeah. say bring your whole system and sit it on a podium and look deep. He didn't say that. He said read the book. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Get familiar with the pages. Yes. Some of the congregation are not familiar with the pages because the leaders don't encourage that. And it's important that you turn the pages because when you do that, Sometimes you come across stuff that you weren't aware was there. Mm -hmm. Because when you use a computer, you just hit first John, uh, uh, 
1 Peter 4, 17. And you go right there. You didn't even have to walk down the road of Scripture to get to that verse. So there are some things you miss. Yes. One of the words in verse 17, for the time is come. Yes. Now remember, when you read in the King James and you see words italicized, there's two reasons for that. The natural reason is because when the translator translated it from the original Hebrew or Greek into the English, that word wasn't there, so they inserted it to give it context. Now, the spiritual reason it's italicized is because God is saying, pay attention to this. Because if you miss this, you're going to miss the whole point. All right. For the time is coming that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And the it there is if judgment first begin at us. And I'm glad that's written because you're going to understand something. Judgment here is from the Greek word krema. And it means a decision. Well. <laughs> now the obvious definition is condemnation or damnation. Mm -hmm. But God said no, that's, that's, that's kind of broad. And it's kind of weak and common. And, you know, then we want to run to the scripture that says there's now no condemnation for those in Christ. Right. So then we say, well, that don't apply to me. But wait a minute. In the Greek, the first definition is a decision. Mm -hmm. A decision. Then it says, in parentheses, the function or the effect for or against crime. That's deep. God said, for the time has come that a decision must begin at the house of God. Now again, this word house, the first definition in the Greek, house here comes from the Greek word oikos. And it means the first definition is a dwelling. So then people say, oh, that means my church is straight. But the second definition says, by implication, a family. So now let's put this in context. Yeah. For the time is come that a decision must begin at the family of God. Read the book. Now here's what we have to notice. Why a decision? Because the Holy Ghost is saying there's issues in God's family that need to be dealt with. Oh my God. Not one issue. Some people say, well, why is it that the Lord uses that ministry to speak against homosexuality, to speak against um, women going by pastors and apostles Amen. why is it that God uses that ministry to dwell on the fact that tithing is used wrongly Amen. in a lot of places of worship yes. why is it that that ministry is used by God to speak against tattoos mm -hmm. or to say men shouldn't wear earrings mm -hmm. in, in a place of worship yes. since they got problems they will but at least in a place of worship why does God use this ministry to speak against other ministers and certain things they say? The answer is because God has already made a decision. In the word he said, he's already made a decision. We know that same sex anything is wrong. Amen. God has already made that decision. Yes. And then there's a lot of people that say, well, you can't judge me. Amen. You're not God. Right. But God has already made a decision. Okay. Well. A lot of women say, well, I know God called me in ministry. Yes, he did call me the pastor. Okay, wait a minute. 
I understand he called you a ministry because that's in scripture. Amen. Ministry only means service. Minister means servant. Okay, he's called you in ministry. But when you say pastor, if there's no biblical example, Amen. then God has already made a decision. All right. All right. I know some of you said, well, he's called me to be an apostle. And they use Romans 16 and 7 as a, as a scripture. Well, Nowhere did it say Junius, or in some translations, Julia, or in another translation, Junia. Nowhere does it say that she was an apostle. Mm -hmm. It says she was of note yes. among the apostles. Mm -hmm. And when you look in the Living Bible, well, in Romans chapter 16, verse 7, mm -hmm. it says, Then there are Andronica and Junius, my relatives who were in prison with me. They are respected by the apostles mm -hmm. and became Christians before I did. Please give them my greetings. Mm -hmm. Now, where does that say that they were apostles? <laughs> Not in our Bible, does it? It Amen. says they were respected by they were respected by them. You would have asked the apostles about them, they would have said, sure, they're Christians. Mm -hmm. We understand they are. Yeah. Because of their walk. So you can't use that. Mm -hmm. Now for a quick, brief Bible study, God didn't give women headship. Mm -hmm. When he made Eve and gave her to Adam, Adam had already walked in the garden. He already named everything. And God said, it's not good that the man be alone. He said this after he told Adam, you name the animals or whatever you call them, that's what they'll be. He already made a decision. What was the decision? I give you headship. I give you headship. The same way I run the world, now you guard the garden and run the earth. And then God said, I love you so much, son that I'm going to give you a help me, somebody to help you. And after he formed Eve, he said, daughter, I love you so much, I'm going to give you someone to protect you. No, for real. Amen. And then God, the Bible says, he brought her to Adam and said, here, and watch this, God step back. Can you see God in the spirit standing there and just Put his head down. Not out of shame, but out of honor. Because he's saying, I've anointed you to not only appreciate your gift, but you're in my image. So whatever you say is really going to be me saying it through you. But I'm giving you the opportunity to make a decision because you're made in my image. What was Adam's decision? It was this. You are now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. And God said. A decision was made. Mm -hmm. And the man and his wife were naked, and they were not ashamed. Because they reveled in the glory of how God made us. Look at all this that we have. Adam had headship. So when it came to pastoring, that is a dominant thing. A dominant responsibility, a dominant office is not a job. Because you get paid for a job. You don't get paid for that. When God tells you to go, sometimes you go and don't get nothing but an amen by God and approval by God, and that goes a long way. Because even when you don't get rewarded in the earth realm for it, it's not that you do, thank you, Lord, it's not that you're doing nothing wrong, but it's because the enemy, his job, and he do get paid for that. He, the, the payment is what? The lake of fire. So he get paid for that job. His job is to try to cause you to trip and mess you up and get you out of order with God lose your soul. and lose your soul. And even about that, Ooh. God mm -hmm. has made a decision.
decision. He said, and if the righteous scarcely be seen, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. I like I like how the Holy Spirit operates and how the Holy Spirit moves. Because today, today we got on every channel that you can imagine preachers talking of this about feel good type of ministry, feel good type of anointing, feel good type of uh, uh, experience that you can make it into the kingdom of heaven just by love, love, joy, peace, and all this other stuff. And however, that is not the case because God says that we as righteous people will suffer persecution. There is a standard that we as Holy Ghost filled people must live by in order for us to represent the true Jesus Christ. Paul said it explicitly in the book of Corinthians where he turned around and says they will come and preach another Jesus. Uh -oh. They will come and preach another gospel. Uh -oh. And they will also bring another spirit. <laughs> and these things, Paul said, do not get yourself entangled with because we, the apostles, not us, the apostles, we, the apostles, I'm talking about Paul and Peter and James, those that walk with Jesus, those that was in the upper room, had the upper room experience, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost that came upon them and signs and wonders followed behind them. And those that changed the world because of the anointing that God placed upon them. They spoke the truth and had the revelation that Jesus Christ revealed unto them. Why? Because God so loved the world that not only did he give his only begotten son, but when he gave his son, he gave his son with a decision uh -oh. to bring men back unto redemption. <laughs> the Lord loves us so much that regardless of our mess, yes. while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. Yes. In spite of our mess, you can be a crackhead, you can be a dope fiend, yes. you can be a prostitute, yes. you can be a homo, yes. you can be a lesbian, you yes. can be a thief, you can be a predator, you can yes. be a pedophile, yes. you can be a molester. I don't care what your lifestyle uh -huh. is. While you were yet a sinner, Jesus died for you. Why? Because before the foundation of the world was, he already knew you and he purposed you yes. to be in his kingdom. He yes. purposed you for you to be what he ordained and predestined you to become. Yes. Not only that, but this scripture that this great man of God is talking about and this great woman of God prayed over. Yeah, I, I, I love that because, see, this is a table pre uh, prepared before us in the presence of our enemies. Who's our enemies? Well, some, I, I, I don't want to get political because some of us like Donald Trump. Yes. Some of us don't like Donald Trump. Yes. But the Bible clearly tells us that it is God that sets up and it is God that put down. Yes. I don't care what your political preference is. It was God that put Trump in the office. Uh -huh. Now, if you got a problem with that, you take it up with God. God knows exactly what he is doing. But when the Bible clearly says judgment, a decision mm -hmm. has been made mm -hmm. about the family of God, mm -hmm. we need, as preachers, uh -huh. need to have the ear uh -huh. to hear what the Spirit uh -huh. is saying in this 21st century yes. to the church yes. and to the world. Yes. The reason why the world is going in the, in the direction that it's going into, mm -hmm. number one, because it's the last days obviously mm -hmm. but when the church becomes like the world mm -hmm. and you can't tell the difference mm -hmm. when the preachers are sitting in 2.5 million dollar mansions mm -hmm. and the people in the pews are on welfare yes. when the preachers are driving around 19 uh, oh no we're not we're not in 19 no more 2018 <laughs> okay i'm telling my age 2018 2000 2019 cars mm -hmm. and they live in, in Westville and they, they live in all in these luxury pro, uh, uh, um, places mm -hmm. and their parishioners are in the ghettos and in the slums that can barely make ends meet the decision that God has made is you are a hypocrite you are what Peter speaks about mm -hmm. about making the gospel out of uh, out of pro, um, um, propaganda out of out of um what, what's that word? You're making you're making profit mm -hmm. from preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. you're, you're you're making fame and fortune out of preaching the gospel. I, I I remember when I came home, 
I'll, I'll give you the testimony some some other time. But I remember when I came home, the apostle put me on. He showed me his telecast. And he used to write me years ago and tell me how God blessed him to go in many different states. And, and, and I, I was amazed about how this man that many people consider as a nobody has been opened up with opportunities to go everywhere to speak to everybody. And it's amazing on how I'm watching telecasts from all over the world on, on, on this great man of God's ministry telecast. And people are popping up everywhere, a dime a dozen, claiming to be apostles, prophets, bishops, archbishops. <laughs> what, 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 what are these all uh, other titles that they call them? These people are popping up everywhere, calling themselves preachers. I got a revelation. I got an anointing. I got a, a word. But a decision of God has been made. And the decision is judgment has been pronounced on the family of God. We have left our first love. We have forsaken the path of the way. In the book of Acts, the Bible didn't call us Christians. It, we were first called Christians in Acts chapter 11 when people mocked them and, and, and said, oh, you must be followers of he who professed to be the Messiah. Uh, we were called of the way. We were called Believers, we were called uh, 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 followers of Jesus Christ. This this title of Christianity, anybody and everybody now claims it, and there is no distinction. I'm not a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I am a follower of the way of of what He has put down and what He has declared from the day of Pentecost. I am a follower of the 66 books of the Bible. I don't twist it. I don't pervert it. I follow by the anointing that has been placed upon the scripture. And according to the scripture, we must do our first works all over again. We must humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And we must strengthen the brotherhood and unite ourselves together. I can keep going on. There's something about preachers. We can preach. But I, I, this is not my telecast. This is Apostle Coleman telecast. So I'm going to tag him to come right back. Tag you in. Can I get it? I, I, I get it. get it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now some of y'all said, wait a minute, that was real deep. Well, you got to research. Because what he said was true. When they were first called Christians, it was mockery. It was, a oh, they're Christian. You know, it was like that. And and so when he said he's not a Christian, don't think that he don't follow Christ. But you, again, have to research. That's why God said, read the book. Because you have to research. And sometimes, I'm not going to say the Bible don't have all the answers, because it does. Yet, God desired that we be wise sometimes and even study history. Amen. God is an excellent teacher. And he will lead you to go wherever you need to go in order to understand his word. And to go deeper in the knowledge of the Son of God. It's important to understand that. It's important. Yet, God made a decision. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. And we need to rightly divide the word of truth. You, you got to understand what the man of God is saying. Now, and the blessing is, yes, the ministry is incorporated in nine states. But believe it or not, I ain't been in all them states. I don't even know what some of them look like. <laughs> but I thank God that my foot is there. Amen, that's right. My foot is there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God has made a decision. Yes. Amen. Oh, right. <laughs> Certainly uh -huh. God has made a decision already concerning who is his and who is not. Certainly he is going to judge not just the righteous but as well as the sinner. And it is already read here. But I want to go to 1 Peter uh, 4 verse 12 which reads... Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Now, I want to read it in the Living Bible. And it reads, there is going to come. <laughs> See, it's already here. There is going to come a time of testing at Christ's judgment day to see 
what kind of material each builder has used. Everyone's work will be put through the fire so that all can see whether or not it keeps its value and what was really accomplished. I didn't give you the scripture, but it's 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13. And this is talking about Christ, the foundation, the solid foundation of which one must stand upon. So God is asking the question on tonight, whose foundation are you standing on? So you must choose this day whom ye shall serve. Right. Certainly, the testing and the trying of you must come because that proves what foundation you are standing on because anything else is sinking sand. Right. So if you're standing upon the solid foundation, when your tests come, you're going to pass. You're not even going to have to take it again. Some has to go back and take it again. Because you have lukewarm. Mm -hmm. See? And God said he'd rather you hot or cold. Right. For if you are lukewarm, yes. he shall spew. That is literally vomiting yes. out of the deepest parts of your belly. Out of the bile yes. of your belly. Yes. He is spewing you yes. out of his mouth. Yes. Now he has made a decision. Mm -hmm. Praise God. <laughs> John chapter 14. Praise God. Here's what Jesus said. He said verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. Yeah. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so. Yes. I would have told you. I go to prepare a place. For yes. you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there, ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Yes. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him. Let me say that again. Jesus mm -hmm. said unto him, yes. I am the way. Yes, I am the way. I am the way. Comma, huh. the truth. The truth. Comma, comma. That means Paul. Yes. He wanted people to get that. Uh huh. All right. And the life. Yes. yes. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You don't go in through your leader. <laughs> My God. You don't go in through your church. Yes. That's right. That's right. You don't go in through Muhammad. All right. You don't go in through Charles Taze Russell. Yes. You don't go into Joseph Smith, because you know the Mormons claim that there's another testament of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. as if the Bible's not good enough. Yes. It's, it's stuff out there that the enemy has put out there to distract you. Mm -hmm. But God has made a decision. Verse 7, if ye had known me, ye should have known my father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Yes. Jesus said this. Mm -hmm. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father, and it suffices us, meaning we'll be satisfied. A lot of times we need to ask questions. Amen. That's what Bible study for. Mm -hmm. Brother pastor, sister minister, when the ministry has Bible study, it is for you to to. to do question and answer. You done hollered on Thursday. You done hollered on Wednesday, Sunday. You done hollered on probably Tuesday. You done hollered all these other days, but there has to be a day where the people need to be able to talk about this. Yes. Mm -hmm. In case there has been something that you said that they don't know the context of. All right now. That's a good word. Philip said unto him, Lord, look, now we've been walking with you all this time. You've been talking about the Father. Yep. Show us. We that's all. Show us, Show us. the Father. Yep. And we'll be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Mm -hmm. Yes. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Mm -hmm. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. In other words, he said, 
you people don't with me all this time. You don't know me, Philip. You don't recognize me. How you gonna say show you the Father and I've been with you all this time? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. There's a lot of ministers who are telling you that God is saying thus and such, and they can't find it in here. Mm -hmm. So many of you are lifting up other leaders, saying, "That's my apostle. That's my pastor." That's my teacher. That's my evangelist. And so forth. Well, Brother Paul was used by the Holy Ghost to discuss something. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. He said, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto, hitherto, ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal or walk as men? Is the ministry in shape? How is the devil going to come into a ministry that God now... I know y'all heard the apostles say... This is not his telecast. This is Apostle Corbin's. Listen, yes, God called us to do a work mm -hmm. over what he give us, but ultimately yeah. this don't belong to me. Right. Right. See, so Paul said, in the ministry there in Corinth, there was envying and strife and divisions. Mm -hmm. Are ye not carnal or walk as men? For while one said, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? While you throwing out the name of the person you say is your leader, don't that make you carnal? You lifting up the leader, but who's lifting up Jesus Christ? Who then is Paul, verse 5, and who is Apollos but ministers, servants? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Minister means servants, right? Mm -hmm. Servants. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> servants, like you said. Servants. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. By whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man, so he using the servant to serve you the gospel, the good news that the tomb is empty. Paul said, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, meaning we're equal. There, there's nobody higher than the other. There's nobody better than the other. We're one. Those that plant and water are one. Yeah. But scripture says, And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Mm -hmm. Ye are God's building. Right. Right. And not ours. That's right. That's right. Come on, brother. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, it's been it, it has been my prayer. It has been my desire for the longest to pray that every church, regardless of your denomination, regardless of your preference, to come together under one cloak and one anointing of God, and to put down your mantle and seek the face of the Lord. I've often said, and often repeated, repeatedly said, that the first person to get on that should get on their knees and cry out to God as if it's their first time are the leaders. Mm. Mm, mm. Are the leaders? Yes, yes. We as leaders, and, and, and I like how how Paul, when Paul spoke, and, and, and whenever he dealt with the people, he never excluded himself. He Amen. always put himself in the yes. midst. Amen. And he says, "We, we." Uh, and, and, and so I'm going to say, "We as leaders have rejected mm -hmm. what salvation looked like. Mm -hmm. We as leaders mm -hmm. have have prepped ourselves up in the high place yes. and, 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 and the in the highest seat. Mm -hmm. And we have cornered the market mm -hmm. and, and we have caused the people to look at us mm -hmm. as being greater than who we really are. Right. And we have caused people to look at us in order for them to get to Christ. And when in fact all we are is nothing more than a stumbling block in the lives of everybody else. Amen. And we're wondering why our communities are messed up. We're wondering why our society is messed up. It's because you got nothing but mirrors mm -hmm. walking around 
our communities. Mirrors of your own leader. If we mirror Jesus Christ, we won't have the problem that we have today. And I say it and I will say it again. If we will humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and we will do our works according to scripture, not according to theology, not according to cemetery schools, not according to your denominational preference, not according to who laid hands on you, but if we do it according to the way the anointing dictates, mm -hmm. then we can destroy yokes yeah. and we can lift burdens. Mm -hmm. Then we can start seeing the lame walk mm -hmm. and the blind see. Mm -hmm. Then we can start seeing our children coming back home and getting off this, this K2 mm -hmm. drugs and all this yeah. crack and yeah. this dope, yeah. all this yeah. weed. Yeah. Then we can stop seeing our women sleeping around and laying around. Then we can stop worrying about men jumping out of bushes mm -hmm. and predating on little kids mm -hmm. and, and, and women. Then we can stop seeing all these liars getting away with the bull crap that they're doing. We can hold people accountable. Why? Because when the anointing stand before anybody that's unholy, you got to come out and tell them. I, I'm trying to calm down. Let me calm down. You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to tell the truth. You got to stand for something or you fall for anything. I like what Dr. Martin Luther King said. He said when, when injustice runs rampant anywhere, then, then, then you got injustice everywhere. I, I, listen, we got injustice everywhere. We got everybody putting up their own standard. We got everybody coming up with their own reality, their own truth. There's only one truth. There's only one standard. And there's only one hope. And that's Jesus Christ. And I got to say this before I turn it back over to, to, to the apostle or, and, and to the prophet. I got to say this. If my people which are called yes. by my name, yes. will humble themselves uh -huh. and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Mm -hmm. What did God promise? He said, I will heal mm -hmm. from heaven. Yes. And then I will heal the land. Mm -hmm. forgive them of their sins. And I will forgive them of their sins. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Bible says when our sins are forgiven, we are cleansed from all unrighteousness. There is no penalty that God holds over anybody that asks for forgiveness. It is only the Christians, I hate to say this, but it's the Christians that hold the past against other people. It is the Christians, not even those of the world, hold your past. They are willing, man, they're willing to give you second chance. Obama came up with second chance. I got a second chance. But when you come to a Christian, they're ready to bring up your past and then bury you all over again. Resurrect you with the power of the anointing and then kill you all over again. And keep doing it and saying they're doing it in the name of Jesus. I can't even walk into a white church in East Haven without being kicked out and looked at like I'm stupid. Why? Because of the color of my skin. I thought Dr. Martin Luther King died because of this mess. This is not 1960 or 1950. This is 2018. Where is the anointing that's supposed to be in our churches? It's not only East Haven. I can't I get the same thing in New Haven. Can't even walk down the street without be calling a nigger to my face. And then the same person that called me a nigger is standing in the pulpit preaching about Jesus. A decision has been made. And that is we're going to get it. When God, Y'all don't think, I, 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 let, me, let me quickly say this. Y'all don't think God is real. Y'all play in church because of your 501c3 status. Y'all play in church because you get taxed right off. Y'all play in church because you're bleeding all these people. Y'all play in church because you sit comfortably in, in these pews. But you truly do not believe Jesus Christ is real. And you don't believe he's coming back. And if you don't believe Jesus is real, then you don't believe the devil is real either. Because if you believe that he was real, you won't be acting the way you acting. Tag time. <laughs> Amen. It, the Lord has certainly made a decision. And I'm just going to piggyback off the apostle here because certainly there are a lot of leaders that instead of them being born again, they are just hirelings. 
that they have just been hired for a job. They're getting big paychecks. They're getting paid to to uh, pastor a church, and they're just uh, feeding off the people. They're not caring about feeding uh, the Lord's sheep. But I come to tell you on tonight that you must be born again. Yes, now, I need to just... Uh, this is what the Holy Ghost, uh, whom is God, uh, gave to me while I was sitting there. Because this is a reply uh, from Jesus to Nicodemus. And I'm not going to read the question because you can go to it yourself. It's in John and chapter 3, begin at verse 1. But I want to deal with the response that Jesus gave because... You must be born again. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So now if you're not born again, you are not entering into the kingdom of heaven. And then Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born? When he is old, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered again, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Now, we're not just talking about a water baptism. Yeah. That you go down, yeah. that one may emerge you in yeah. and you come up. See, because you went in an old devil and you're just going to come up a new one. Yep. Now, the thing of it is, is the word of God. Amen. That is water. Oh, that wow. is living water. Yeah. That one may not thirst again. Yeah. So, he says, of the water and of the spirit, mm -hmm. he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Oh, now, this oh. spirit is not a small s. Because there are many spirits right. and there are many that are operating in these households yes. Yes. of prayer, yes. uh, in these places of worship. Yes. So, which judgment is coming mm -hmm. to your house? Mm -hmm. Not the building, mm -hmm. but to this yes. body. Yes. It is coming yes. and there is a day. That is here now. You see it happen. Listen, just because it did not happen to you yet, mm -hmm. it shall happen. You're keeping your eye on the big mega churches, yes, right. see, that are getting exposed yes. in homosexuality, yes. that are getting exposed in embezzlement, yes. that are getting exposed in uh, 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 molestation, yes. and all of this. But yes. listen. It is happening in a, at a corner next to you. See, and right. judgment is coming. You're going to hear about it. But Jesus went on to say, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So God has made a decision already. Who shall enter into the kingdom of God? Oh, yeah. Oh. All right. Praise the Lord. I tell you, I'm not going to try to clean nothing up. Well, Apostle Whitfield was wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to try to clean nothing up. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said on the way here, I said, Lord, I'm not going to apologize for nothing that said as the Lord lead. You got to understand the context. I mean, he didn't curse the bull thing. He didn't curse. No. Praise God. <laughs> I was I over there going, <laughs> and the N word, I was. But, but that was wrong. But that's wrong. I mean, because there's some of you that are from and in the streets that don't understand nothing else. <laughs> and, and, and the thing about apostles 
is we we're vicious and can be rough, but uh, oh God, and, and prophetesses and evangelists rough because we God has anointed the fivefold to reach everybody. Yes, sir. Yeah. Jesus started off in that John chapter 3 teaching. Yes. Nicodemus said in verse 1, there was a man, scripture says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, that means teacher. Yes, counsel, the yes. same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, which means teacher. Yes. We know that thou art a teacher to come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Yes. And see, as the prophetess was used by God to say, is that the Lord began to minister to Nicodemus about being born again. And when Nicodemus asked that question, yes. how can a man be born when he's old? Jesus went up a level. Yes. And a lot of people, again, they run right over this. And that is in verse, uh, scripture verse 12, John chapter 3, Jesus said, If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Yes. But that didn't stop him. He didn't say, all right, Nicodemus, poor guy. I, no, yes. he went up a notch. <laughs> he said, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, now uh -huh. the King James is what it says, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. <laughs> my, my. The yes. Son of Man. We talk, he's talking about Jesus yes, himself. himself. But he said, which is in heaven. A teacher would accord that and say, wait a minute, what do you mean you in heaven? You're here right now. Right, right. He's talking about his omnipresence. Yes. He's God. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get thrown off because when they come to Jesus, he's the, he, he's the stumbling the, yes. the stumbling block. Yes. He's the one that when you walk in and you think you're walking with God and you come to a truth about Jesus and all of a sudden, pow! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And, and if you're not careful, you stumble. This is why you got to get in the Word. Yeah. So we can learn yeah. about Him. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Him. Yeah. He's made a decision. Here's the decision God made. Yeah. The decision is, no man can come to the Father but by the Son. Yes. Not by Mary. Yes, sir. Mary was full of just as much sin as anybody else. Yes, she knew it. Yes. That's why she called Jesus her Lord. Now, yes, I know sir. some Catholics could have a, a fit about this, mm -hmm. but I got to tell you the breaking news. There's one mediator yes. between man and God. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus Christ. Yes. yes. Now, again, the Lord let me share with you when Apostle Whitfield said about he's not a Christian and he mentioned why, what that meant, but don't don't take it the wrong way. Yes, yes, he yes. is a follower of Christ. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yes. And watch this. There's two sides of a coin. And when you understand words, wordology, terminology, when you study and you understand certain things, then you can take the bone, the meat, the chicken, chew the meat, throw the bone away, but the point is you'll understand what he's saying. Yes. Now watch this. I'm going to say, I am a Christian. Mm -hmm. Does that say we're on two opposite sides? No. 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 Watch this. I'm not religious. Mm -hmm. Amen. Same thing, right? Same, same way I'm presenting it. Yes. You might say, wait a minute, you're not religious, but we, no, I'm not. I'm spiritual, mm -hmm. but I'm not religious. I have a relationship with God. Yes, sir. Here's how we're going to end this. Now, this is, you're going to hear a beat. And that means we got, what, aside two more minutes? Two minutes? All right. We're going to, I'm going to have to let the Lord use me to this because if you ask a prophetess to pray, she's going to pray that Jesus come back. And if you ask a deep apostle to pray, he's going to get into another Bible study. So as the Lord, as the Lord leads, we, we just got to do it this way. Y'all pray the Lord lead y'all. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins. And, and just be with us, Lord. Thank you for this time of fellowship. Thank you for the way you use us to be used by you. Thank you, oh Lord, for how you have taught to your people. Thank you, oh God, how you have made your truth known. Thank you for how you have reached people's hearts, oh God. Thank you how you sat high and looked low. Thank you for orchestrating this whole lesson. We just thank you for the way you use the gifts. Thank you for the way you use the anointing. Thank you for the way you even got the ministers praying in the back. Because we are all talking to you, and you are so out 
omnipotent that you're able to hear all three of us individually at the same time. How? We don't know. But there's other people praying too all over the world that are watching this. That you're hearing them at the same time. We thank you for being God. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for giving your life to us. Thank you for offering yourself to yourself for us. We just thank you. We just thank you. Yes, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, as we yes. as we end this yes, show, Lord. as you say, yes, please allow your words to remain. Yes, Lord. Not our words. Take root in but your words. Yes. Grow, Father, Let it take root. Let that fruit remain. Yes. 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 Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Thank you, Jesus. And for answering us. Yes, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I tell you, that's that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care. <laughs> Till the next time. In Jesus' name. I just thank you for all that I have in you and all that you are in my life for all that you've done for thy servant Lord you're just so wonderful you're just so wonderful I can't think of how else my life would be without you as long as I have Jesus I have a satisfied mind this is my prayer sometimes I
good friend.